already feeling the political heat. Americans are worried about the economy, and there are growing signs that the economy will slow down. Special Counsel Robert Mueller is tightening the net around the president and his inner circle. In addition, Trump has one of the highest disapproval ratings of any sitting president in modern history. But the real challenge for Trump may come from the increasing number of strong women who are crowding the presidential field for the 2020 election. We are here because the American dream and our American democracy are under attack and on the line like never before. This is the fight of our lives, the fight to build an America where dreams are possible and America that works for everyone. Does this group of rising forces pose a threat to Trump's re-election prospects? Absolutely.、Uh, I remember back in 1992,、uh, the year of the woman, the election. There was only eight women in Congress. Now we have uh, uh, significantly more. In the 2016、uh, primary, we had a, a single female candidate, Hillary Clinton. Now we have an excess of five or five or six. I think that the、uh, the woman vote, the female vote, is going to be significant in the 2020 election for a variety of reasons. Polls show that President Trump is underwater with female voters, especially among white suburban women, a group that is expected to vote in record numbers in 2020. Many of Trump's controversial moves, from his family separation policy to the Supreme Court confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh, have alienated women across the country. Historically, the Republican、uh, Party has suffered from what has been described as a gender gap. Uh, Donald Trump has created a gender Grand Canyon in terms. There's a huge gap、uh, between uh, the uh, the female vote, the woman vote, and the Republican Party that is probably unbridgeable. So the、uh, the woman vote in 2020 is going to be significant and is probably going to be. Uh, just a bridge too far uh, for uh, Donald Trump, both in terms of、uh, his own party. I think he's going to have problems within his own party,、uh, definitely among the Democrats, but also most importantly among independent. Many believe that it was Trump's conduct that turned 2018 into the year of the woman. Women mobilized in opposition to President Trump right after he got elected, and they made history in the November midterms. A total of 112 mostly young women were elected to Congress, a body historically dominated by older men. For now, Trump can choose to ignore that he was a factor in this seismic shift. And exactly one century after Congress passed the constitutional amendment giving women the right to vote, we also have more women serving in Congress than at any time before. Women also hit a series of significant milestones last year. 29-year-old Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez became the youngest woman ever elected to Congress. We launched this campaign because no one was clearly and authentically talking about issues like the corrupting role of money in politics, like the disturbing human rights violations being committed by ICE. By the fact that we that no one was giving voice to the idea and the notion that an entire generation is graduating with crippling loads of student loan debt, a ticking time bomb for our economy, no one was talking about these issues. And when no one talks about them, we have the duty to stand up for what is right. Democrats Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib also became the first Muslim women elected to Congress. Will the effects of their involvement reshape American politics going forward? But I think the real stars are uh, Congress uh, women、uh, Talib and Elian Omar,、uh, not only by being uh, uh, women、uh, Congress members, but also the first uh, uh, Muslim uh, women Congress members. I think it's important to note uh, that uh, uh, Muslim Americans are obtaining political power. Uh, at a much more rapid pace than, say, African Americans or Latinos、uh, did in the American political system, and I think that's significant and very important and critical,、uh, given the Islamophobia、uh, that is plaguing、uh, the United States. Casio Cortez has attracted more media attention than Democrats running for president. 
Like Donald Trump, Cortez has mastered Twitter and is making waves in the news. Many have already described the charismatic freshman as the leader of the Democratic Party. She is the leader. Everybody knows it. Everybody feels it. She's the leader of this of this mass movement that is not I'm not talking about a movement in terms of an organization. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a Fox Fox News poll this week mm -hmm. that where it said 70 percent of the American public agree with her mm -hmm. on having the top marginal rate for the rich. Their taxes, 70 percent rate. Ocasio-Cortez is not running for president. According to the U.S. Constitution, she has to wait until she's 35. But she is pushing the party farther to the left. This has become evident in the signature positions of candidates like Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris. They want aggressive new taxes on the rich and a fully government-run health care system. Could Congresswoman Cortez emerge as a Democrat's Trump? Uh, Trump has essentially nastied his way uh, and insulted his way into American politics and into the White House and into public office. Uh, Alexander Ocasio-Cortez uh, has taken a, a high road and has used social media to reach out to her constituents and to propose uh, public policy. Uh, so I would disagree that she is the Democrats' Trump. I think she uses social media tools uh, in similar ways that Donald Trump does by way of bypassing the media and going directly uh, to her constituents, uh, both within her congressional district and nationwide. It's not just Trump's conduct that has energized women. It's also the message that female candidates are signaling to voters. Senator Warren, who announced her candidacy this month, told her supporters at a rally that the Trump administration is the most corrupt in living memory. We need to take power in Washington away from the wealthy and well-connected and put it back in the hands of the people where it belongs. Another potential comes from California Senator Kamala Harris, who announced her candidacy in January. Harris is a former prosecutor and a sharp contrast to Trump. And as we embark on this campaign, I will tell you this. I am not perfect. Lord knows I am not perfect. But I will always speak with decency and moral clarity and treat all people with dignity and respect. There's also New York Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, who clashed with Trump in 2017 over his mistreatment of women. Gillibrand has called on Congress to investigate the multiple sexual harassments and assault allegations against the president. Trump attacked Gillibrand on Twitter, calling her a lightweight and claiming she came to him begging for campaign contributions. I'm not going to be silenced on this issue. I've heard the testimony of many women, uh, numerous accusers. I believe them, and he should resign for that. Um, I think Congress should do an investigation because uh, we need accountability, and women aren't going to be silenced right now. And as we just saw in Alabama, women are not going to be silenced. African-American women are not going to be silenced, and they came out in numbers. Can these female candidates take on Trump and potentially beat him? Well, I think that's, uh, uh, that's going to be the challenge. I think it's not going to be enough just to be anti-Trump. And I think Senator Warren's uh, analogy of the Trump administration is correct. Everyone need only look at the turnover in his administration, the number of indictments and guilty pleas, and not only that, the uh, backgrounds of the people that Trump has brought in. Remember, Trump said he was going to bring in uh, the best people. Well, that hasn't been the case. But it's important that Democrats understand that it's not enough to just be anti-Trump. I think people are going to have Trump fatigue, but at the same time, they're going to want to look at real policies and look at real change. Trump sees these rising forces as a potential threat and will try to smear them on Twitter. That will likely hurt the president's re-election prospects as every tweet will remind female voters of his record on gender issues. How will the 2020 election campaign play out? Uh, Donald Trump has uh, already attacked 
uh, every candidate, actually, and every potential candidate, uh, he's attacked uh, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren with uh, racist uh, comments with regard to Native Americans. He attacked uh, Senator Amy Klobuchar already. Uh, he attacked uh, uh, Beto O'Rourke uh, with regard to comparing sizes of their respective rallies uh, down in Texas. Uh, this is Trump's uh, uh, manus operandi. This is what he does. Uh, he's a cyber bully, and there is a large segment of Trump followers that that appeals to, and there's no reason to believe that Trump will change. Americans are increasingly disillusioned by partisanship and political divide in Washington. They have realized that the Washington dysfunction is directly impacting their lives. Dissatisfaction with both Democrats and Republicans has risen sharply. The election of Donald Trump was the clearest testament to this shift of sentiment. In 2016, both parties were rattled by Trump, who had described himself as an outsider. I don't think Americans right now actually really identify themselves in the old school way of I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, you know. I don't think that's what's going on. I think that people have had it. I think that they have realized that they're sick and tired of living from paycheck to paycheck mm -hmm. and this has to end. And they know that their kids are never going to pay off those And if we loans. didn't see it, we saw it in the shutdown where you saw government employees, the ones that a whole bunch of Republicans spent years telling me are overpaid, who couldn't make it to their yeah, second another paycheck lie. when they weren't. Lie after lie. For Democrats, the question of winnability and who could crush Donald Trump is perhaps the most important issue. Who could win in 2020 and what does it take to beat Trump? Historically, uh, the American uh, populace, the American electorate votes in the center. Uh, the last two most successful Democratic presidents, uh, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama, campaigned specifically in the center with specific centrist uh, policies, and they govern that way. And Trump has greatly uh, degraded the character of American society. He has greatly degraded American values. And I think that Trump can be beat on those issues, uh, coupled with a centrist uh, political message.